Right, so the big idea in 3.10 is that you're looking at the difference between two groups. So here we've got males and females. There's only be two. You're looking at quantifying that difference. So it's not who's the winner, who's bigger, who's faster. You're actually looking at a value for that difference. Okay? In your question, you must have the population. So athletes in the Australian Institute of Sport, that is your population. It's important to notice that this data <coughs> here is sample data. It is not the entire population data. But we're actually answering a question to do with the population. We have a variable that we're comparing. So that variable here is height. And that's a measurement variable or a continuous variable, whereas that's a categorical split. So that variable is height. The statistic here is median. So notice I can see median here and median here. If they don't match up, you're in big trouble. OK? So because we've put median, we've got box and whisker plots. If we put mean, the box and whisker plots don't show on the um, bootstrap module because the median is the middle bit of the box and whisker and a mean doesn't work so well with box and whisker. So what we've got here is the sample. Okay, so the sample, we can see that male's median is 10.5, what is this, height, so that's centimetre. So male's median height in my sample is 10.5 centimetre. 10.55 centimetres greater than, further up the scale, than the female's median heights. That's in my sample. Okay? So you need to make <coughs> comments about that. So this is not the entire thing. All I'm giving you here is the inference. What's this bit here? Resampling from the sample to get an idea of the accuracy. What we can see, if we compare this with this, is there's an area here where there's no crossover. So that's indicating to me that I can pretty much confidently say that males tend to be taller than <coughs> females. I could kind of guess it back in the population. Males are somewhere between here and here, and females, are, um, the true population median would be somewhere between there and there. OK, there's my bootstrap distribution. So it's the thousand resamples all those different arrows, okay? So with all those different arrows, there's always been the arrow going that way. There has been not one single case of the arrow going the other way, with the females being here and the males being here. Because well, the females was between here and here, males between here and here, so all the arrows went that way. Because all the arrows have gone that way, we can see zero is not in this distribution. Okay? So, let's sweep our inference. It is a fairly safe bet, is the language that um, people at Auckland Uni gave us. One of the students has put a fairly safe assumption. <coughs> this is a fairly nice language because bet has a betting connotation, so I quite like that word. Okay, the big deal here is that you've got this idea that it's not certain. It's fairly safe, but it's not necessarily certain. Because with um, statistics, when you're getting population statistics from sample statistics, you're always guessing. So you're never certain. Okay, it's a fairly safe assumption, so that's important to have. That the difference, so that word difference comes again, the same language as my problem. Between the median, so that's my statistic that I'm comparing, um, sorry, yeah, the statistic, that's my variable, the heights, of male and female, my categorical split. Athletes in the Australian Institute of Sport, that is my population. So why I'm pointing this out is that you need to tick these off when you've got the sentence. Don't just write a sentence at the end of it. You've got to tick them off. And I'll just show you the tick list. 
So we go bootstrap, and the more in depth checklist is actually on that excellence page. And if we scroll down, you can see comparison question includes the variable, the groups, the population, the statistic. That bit there's achieved. For the excellence and merit, you're doing research and making more of a purpose as to why you're doing it, you're not just doing it, and a prediction of what you might see and why. So that's your merit excellence part, but for achieved, you need that language. With your conclusion, interpretation of formal confidence interval. Okay, So that's what we're doing at the moment. We've got a sample to population link is strong, so this understanding that we're making a prediction with um, from a sample to a population. Population parameter identified. So that means you don't write the population. You actually have got to substitute it, making it very clear that you know what the population is. Um, correct call should reflect the investigative question. So you've got to answer the question. And the call is based on whether zero is contained in the interval or not. Okay? So th that's the achieved kind of bits out of that section that I've found. So here, again, you've actually used this value and this value. What have I added? I've added my units in. So I've got units, I've got the population, I've got the thing I'm category split I'm dealing with, I've got the statistic, I've got the variable, I've got the fact that it's a difference, and I've got an understanding of sampling variability that it's a fairly safe bet, or fairly safe assumption. This sentence here, I can <coughs> hypothesise, so, you know, you're not again being certain, that males tend to be taller than females as zero is not included in my bootstrap interval. So this is achieved level because, um, you know, for merit and excellence you're bringing in research and it's a lot sort of more detailed and you've got that, uh, those exemplars to look at and we'll create some of our own. But the big thing to pass is you've got to mention the zero. Now if we had values here, we wouldn't be able to say this. We wouldn't be able to make the call. So this is an example of a fairly safe assumption that the difference between them is between this and that, and I can make it because zero is not included in my bootstrap interval. Okay. Also, here we've said the difference, but we didn't actually say in that sentence who was taller. So here I can hypothesise that males tend to be taller than females has actually filled that need. Okay, So that's a real skeletal. It wouldn't be a pass because other things to pass that you have to do is compare the central tendency of these two scatters. So it's a matter of um, a statement that the female's median is this, the male's median is that, the male's median is 10.55 centimetres greater than the female's median height. Um, you've got to say something about the shape of the data, so I can look at that and see that that's relatively bell-shaped, both of them. Um, both of them are fairly symmetrical. This one's skewed to the right a little bit, isn't it? Cause that length is longer than that length a little bit. Maybe these guys are outliers. <coughs> Maybe. Um, it's interesting that you seem to have uh, a bit of a bimodal thing and a bit of a gap there. With you, it's interesting that that's at 180, and that's perhaps somewhere around 175. So I almost wonder if it's a bit of rounding. <coughs> And here with the males as well, you can maybe the 190 not so much, but this one here might be at 185, don't know. So there might be a matter of rounding, um, don't know. But just some comments about the spread of the data, the central tendency, skew the togs. So tail, Outliers, groups, skew, symmetry, and shape are all things that you can comment on. So that's in the analysis part. Okay?